If you want to make the strongest scented candle ever, you must get three steps right. Make sure you stay till the very end because I am sharing tips that you haven't heard before. Let's get started. Making a candle is like building a house. First, we need our foundations. The foundations in a candle are the materials. To get the materials right, we need to start with our suppliers. This is key to make the strongest scented candle ever. If you buy your materials on Amazon, you won't get the same results. You need to look for reliable candle suppliers. Everyone talks about how important it is to buy quality materials, but nobody says how important is the way you store your materials. You can buy the best quality product from the best suppliers, but if you don't store them the right way, they will be useless. Direct sunlight and UV rays are damaging to fragrance oils and waxes. Store your bottles and wax in a cool and dark place. Nobody talks about it, but this is key. The average shelf life of fragrance oils is about a year. Don't use old fragrance oils. Your wax plays a very important role in making the strongest scented candle ever. Some waxes just don't work well with some fragrance oils. Soy wax is known for being more, more temperamental. If consistency in your candle line and a punch in the face type of scent is important to you, you may want to consider switching to a paraffin wax. My favorite are IGI 4627 and 4630. If you prefer using a soy wax or a blend, you may consider an additive such as Viber. It can enable wax to retain higher fragrance loads. There are two types of Viber. 103 used for pillar waxes, 260 used for container waxes. Essential oils are volatile. They evaporate more quickly when exposed to heat. Candles made with essential oils don't retain their scent as long as candles made with fragrance oils. Use fragrance oils made for candle making. I am going to do a separate video on essential oils and fragrance oils, which I'm sure will help you a lot in your candle journey. Some fragrance oils are manufactured stronger than others. If the manufacturer uses more natural ingredients and less quality solvent, the fragrances may be less strong. You may have to buy different fragrance oils from different suppliers to find the best one for you. Shop around! Not all fragrance oils are meant to be strong. Some of them are designed to provide a soft scent. In my experience, some clean scent, like clean cotton, can be lighter than a fruity one, like Fruit Loops. Don't go off the strength of the fragrance out of the bottle. Always test in candles. Using too little fragrance oil will lead to a candle with very little scent throw, but adding too much fragrance oil can lead to problems in the candle, which also can cause the candle to have little hot throw. I personally suggest to start with 8% and test your candles from beginning to the end, increasing 
or decreasing by 1%. Having the right wig for your wax is very important for a strong hot throw. Research which wig works best with your type of wax. Also, using the correct size of wig can help with the scent throw. Too small of a wig will create a small burn pole, which will lead to poor scent throw. Too large of a wig may burn too hot and actually burn off the fragrance, which also can lead to poor centro. A small candle will never have the hot throw of a large candle. If you want the strongest scented candle ever, you may want to consider making a bigger candle. I recommend starting with at least 10 ounces or about 300 grams container. Okay, now you know that you need to make a bigger candle. But did you know that the shape of your jar is very important too? Instead of choosing a tall and narrow jar, choose a wider and shorter container. Because the important factor in your candle is the diameter. Having a larger diameter will enable you to put more wicks. And this is my next point. Double or triple wicking could be a game changer for you. The melt pool plays a very important role in the hot throw. Using two wicks instead of one or three instead of two may help you make the strongest scented candle ever. I personally recommend the following. You can use color in your candles, but make sure you use quality candle dye, not mica, and the right quantity. Check with your supplier. Using the wrong dye or using too much dye can clog the wick, which will affect the centro. If you're getting some value from this video, please give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, give it a thumbs down. Okay, now we have our foundations. The next step is the structure of the house, which is the process. Adding your fragrance oil at a low temperature may prevent the fragrance oil from binding with the wax. Adding the fragrance oil at a too high of a temperature may cause it to burn off in the melted wax. I personally recommend checking the instruction of your wax and test, test, test. To ensure that the fragrance is completely binding with the wax, always stir the fragrance oil for two to three minutes. Set a timer, don't just guess it. This is another game changer. You need to let your candle cure in order to have the best hot throw possible. The curing process allows the fragrance oil to be dispersed evenly throughout the candle as it hardens. These are my recommendation for curing time, but always check with your supplier. Not everyone agrees on this, but I personally recommend curing the candle with the lid on. First, the lid on top of the candle keeps the candle wax clean from dust, so you have a beautiful, clean candle. Also, by using a lid, you don't give a chance to the fragrance oil to escape. This way, your candle will have a great centro, cold and hot. This is vital to know what is working and what you need to change next time. Don't use stick notes that you might lose. Use a notebook or a Word document.
Now that we have our foundation and our structure, it's time for the roof of the house. Testing. Without a proper roof, a house is useless. Same thing for a candle. If you make a perfect candle, but you or your customers don't burn it the right way, you may still experience a weak hot throw. Burn your candle until the melted wax pool covers almost the entire surface. A smaller candle may smell amazing in a small bathroom, but go unnoticed in a large living room. For testing your candles, I recommend a medium-sized room. Make sure the candle is not placed near any open windows or other places where the scent can escape. This is vital for the candle to produce a strong enough scent. If the wick is too long, the flame will be too large and burn the melted wax at a faster rate, giving the scent less time to evaporate and fill a room. If you implement all these steps, you will be making the strongest scented candle ever. If, after doing all this, your candle still doesn't smell strong, get a second and a third opinion. You may be nose blind because you are making so many candles or simply because you got a cold or hay fever. Let me know in the comment down below which tip is your favorite and watch my candle maker for dummies guide next. Ciao guys!